Hi, I'm Creston, and in this tutorial we're going to cover PostgreSQL replication slots. Now this tutorial assumes you already have streaming replication set up. If not, I encourage you to watch my streaming replication tutorial in the link below the video. Now we're going to go over a few slides that explain some concepts, and then we're going to jump into actually enter commands to set up replication slots. All right, let's jump into PostgreSQL replication slots. So a replication slot is a feature that was introduced in PostgreSQL 9.4 along with uh, the logical decoding feature uh, that as of PostgreSQL 10 is essentially logical replication. So slots ensure that a master or primary server retains enough wall segments for all replicas to receive them. Historically, the master database has been pretty ignorant to the state of the replicas. And in order to ensure that certain wall segments weren't removed, it had the setting wall keep segments. And you had to set that sufficiently high so that if replicas became disconnected, from the master for either they were shut down or the connection between them was lost, you had to make sure that was high enough so that um, streaming replication can continue again without having to fall back to copying the wall files um, from the archive directly to those replicas. Now, um, replication slots also prevent the master database from removing rows that could cause a recovery conflict on the replicas. Now, normally a recovery conflict is just in terms of queries being able to be done on a hot standby, but um, it could also happen that you need to fall back to bringing wall files over if those replicas are disconnected from the master for an extended period of time. Now, here's a big disadvantage with uh, replication slots is that if you have a replica that is shut down or it fails and you do not remove that rep replication slot from the master, it's essentially an orphan record and that can cause essentially unbounded disk growth of a master's wall files because it can no longer remove them. So this is something to keep in mind if you decide to start using replication slots. Essentially, it goes from a keeping the wall keep segments high enough and having concern that a replica comes out of sync to more of a disk-based concern that you want to keep very close tabs on your disk space when you're using replication slots. All right, let's jump into the live examples. Okay, for these examples, I'm going to be using Ubuntu. You can feel free to use your own distribution. And I have already set up a PostgreSQL version 10 and it created, uh, creating the cluster here, created a main database cluster on port 5432. And I've also created another database cluster called Replica on port 5433. Now this closely, this is essentially the same configuration that I used in a previous lesson on PostgreSQL streaming replication. I will have a link to that uh, in the notes for the show. The Replica is a hot standby of the uh, main cluster. So it is actively synchronizing the data between them. And what I wanna do is th this was set up without using replication slots. So I'm going to show you, okay, how do you go ahead and switch actively active replica into one using replication slots? Uh, because once you see this, then it's pretty easy to just do that instead when you set up a replica. So the first thing I'm going to wanna to do is I wanna create a replication slot um, on main, the main cluster. So first I'm going to go into a user, um, the Postgres user using that command. And as you can see, there is some existing data. Um, this is from the replica and there is some existing data in there already in a post table. Okay, we're going to ahead and run this command that will uh, select all from PG create a physical replication slot. So again, this is something for a streaming replication. Now you also give a, a name for the slot. I'm just going to call it repli replica to match the name of the cluster. Okay, so that slot has been created. And then we can look at the slot 
by just doing select all from PG replication slots. We can see there's the name replica and the slot type is physical um, and currently it is not active. So now we actually need to specify on the replica uh, DB cluster that we wanted to use the slot. Um, so the way I'm going to do it is alter the recovery.conf and add from the configuration that exists that we created in a previous tutorial, I'm just going to add primary slot name uh, equals the name of the slot that we've selected. So again, those are five commands there, and we're just going to add this one. Okay, now that's in place, we actually need to restart the replica so it will uh, pick up this change to the recovery.com file. So I'm going to go ahead and use a user that can actually restart the cluster. Okay, that's been restarted. And we'll actually just take a look at the logs to verify. And it did a recent restart. Um, it's entering standby mode and started streaming wall from the primary. So at this point, it should be using that slot. And we can check the status by on the main cluster looking at PG replication slots. And here we see that it is active um, in the PID it's using and its current uh, essentially location in the wall files. Now just to confirm replication st is still working, we'll go ahead and insert some data. We're putting this into the primary cluster. Okay, you've been inserted and now we will check it on the replica cluster to make sure that okay so we have those two additional rows that have just been inserted okay so what happens when we go ahead and stop or the main uh, cluster fails uh, and we say we want to promote the replica let's take a look at what that looks like so first I'm going to go ahead and stop uh, the main cluster All right, that's stopped. I'm going to go ahead and promote, using this command, uh, the replica cluster. And just to check the log files, um, promote request received, database ready to accept connections. Okay, so that worked. And let's... Take a look at the replication slots in the replica, and you'll see that it has no replication slots. So when you do promote a replica to the master to become the master, you will have to add any replication slots and make sure that any other replicas are following this new master. So that is something you'll, you'll have to be aware of um, when you move to using replication slots. And that's a quick overview of using replication slots. They're pretty easy to set up. Uh, just remember the caveat that you need to have a mechanism in place in order to handle replication slots. And if you have a replica fails uh, or goes offline for a time, you need to make sure to uh, remove those slots um, so that you don't have significant growth of your wall files because it's unable to get rid of them. I hope this was helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to visit the link in the description below the video. If you want to receive additional content and tutorials, please visit scalingpostgres.com to sign up. Thanks.